Hi, my name is Siri Maddy and I'm a DYC student leader. So in today's workshop, we're going to be covering essay writing tips. So this workshop will help you improve your writing and overall just help your essay flow better together because we will cover the structure, how to improve your essay, and specific types of essays. About design your careers. Design Your Careers is a nonprofit organization that allows student leaders like myself to volunteer in the community by showcasing and teaching our talents and abilities through free online workshops. To learn more, visit www.designyourcareers.org. Our community impact in numbers. So as you can see, we have done a lot in numerous countries globally because it's because of the DYC platform, which allows you to have limitless opportunities and gives leadership recognition for the contribution to stand out in colleges and future careers. For example, we have over 60 student leaders across the United States. We've helped over 2,500 students learn many new skills and we've hosted over 150 workshops globally. So let's go, just go over our agenda real quick about what we're going to be covering in today's workshop. So first, we're just going to have an about me, which is a, just a quick introduction about who I am. Uh, what is an essay? Just going to go over the basic overview of what an essay is. Overview of an essay is where we're going to be covering the structure of an essay and all the components. Parts of an essay is where we go more in depth about each part, how you're going to structure, how you would improve each part. Just the writing process next the main types of essays, and other types of essays, which are just some more examples. So we're starting with my about me, which is just who I, a quick introduction of who I am. So my name is Siri Maddie. I am 15 years old. I'm a sophomore at Centennial High School, and in my free time, I enjoy hiking, drawing, and reading lots of books. So just our overall question, what is an essay? So, an essay is a piece of writing that is intended to communicate a concept, make a case, convey an emotion, or start a discussion. It is a way to present writers' ideas in a non-fictional context. Numerous uses for this kind of writing go well beyond that, as well as the author's own observations and opinions. So, essays can range in length from 500 words to 5,000 words or more. However, the majority of essays are between 1,000 and 3,000 words long. This allows authors the sufficient amount of time to construct an argument in depth and try to persuade the readers of their point of view on a particular topic. So over here, as you can see, over here we have the, near the bottom of the slide, we have just a little diagram for the structure. So just start off with an introduction to start off with an introduction, then usually three body paragraphs and a conclusion. And we introduce our main points in the introductory paragraph. And then our conclusion is where we conclude everything. And then just we support all our main points through our body paragraphs. Overview of an essay. So this is just the structure of an essay and what goes into each part. And some few a few tips and tricks to improve your essay. So we start off right away with an introduction, which is just a general statement with information about the topic. And so there are three parts that make up an introduction, which is just the hook, the relevant context, and then thesis statement. Then we have a three body paragraphs, which support these main ideas. And then we just have our conclusion, which is just a summary. So when developing the structure of an essay, two key factors to consider including to ensure that each section has appropriate material and choosing how to arrange the information in the body. There are three main parts of an essay, an introduction paragraph, body paragraphs, and a conclusion. The introduction paragraph presents your topic, provides background, and gives your thesis statement. The body paragraphs are the core arguments in a lab analysis, present evidence, present evidence has one main point per paragraph, start with the topic sentence and all paragraphs relate back to the thesis. 
The conclusion paragraph ties together your main points and shows why your argument is important. You must also think about how to organize the information in the body. There are a few general guidelines that can help you in this situation. The first is that you build complexity into your essay as you go on, just by starting with the simplest proposition. A strong argumentative essay will frequently start with straightforward, generally agreed upon points in the body before moving on to more complicated, debatable points. For instance, you may introduce a well-established idea before using it to discuss a new subject. The reader will be able to comprehend your particular application of the broad principle after having a solid foundation in it. The second rule in the introduction for the introduction of your essay is that it should include background information to give context to your readers. The introduction provides some background information and if you need it, more background information, you can use it in the beginning of your body paragraph so that as the readers go through the essay, they understand your points more thoroughly instead of just focusing on figuring out the context as to what your essay is about. The third guideline is that everything you write in your essay should support your topic. Examine each piece of information that you add to see if it contributes to your argument or gives the background that you need. Additionally, make sure that your language choice is clear, concise, and expresses the significance of the information. So parts of an essay. The first part, as we went over before, is the introduction. Okay, an introduction paragraph is the first paragraph in an essay. It serves as an opening for the essay and should grab the reader's attention and provide some context for the topic. The introduction paragraph should also include a clear and concise thesis, which is a sentence that summarizes the main argument or point of the essay. So there are several components that should be included in an introduction essay. The first is a hook, which is a statement or question that is designed to grab the reader's attention. This could be a rhetorical question, a surprising statistic, or thought-provoking quote. Next is the background information, which provides context for the reader. This could include a brief overview of the topic or some historical context. The main purpose of the background information is to help readers understand the context in which the essay is written and to set the stage for the main argument. The third component of an introduction essay is a thesis statement. As mentioned earlier, the thesis statement is a single sentence that summarizes the main argument or point of the essay. It should be clear and concise, and it should be located towards the end of the introduction paragraph. Overall, the introduction paragraph is an important part of an essay, as it serves as an opening and sets the stage for the rest of an essay. It should include a hook, background information, and a clear and concise thesis. So over, so next we're gonna be going over the body paragraph and the structure in which we will make a body paragraph. So a body paragraph is a paragraph that appears in the main body of an essay and is used to support the main argument or point of an essay. A body paragraph typically consists of a topic sentence, several supporting sentences, and a concluding sentence. The topic sentence is the first sentence of the body paragraph and states the main idea or point that the paragraph will be discussing. It should be it should be clear and directly related to the main idea. The supporting sentences are the sentences that follow the topic sentence and provide evidence or examples that relate back to the main idea of the paragraph. The sentences should be well organized and clearly explain how the evidence evidence or examples support the main idea of the paragraph. The concluding sentence is the last sentence of the body paragraph and summarizes the main points of the paragraph. It should provide a sense of closure and prepare the reader for the next body paragraph. The body paragraphs are essential as it provides support for the main argument or point of the essay 
It should consist of the topic sentence, several supporting sentences, and a concluding sentence. Together, these elements help develop and strengthen the main argument of an essay. So the final part of an essay is the conclusion, which is just the last paragraph of the essay. Its purpose is to summarize the main points of the essay and restate the thesis statement in a new way. It should provide a sense of closure and leave the readers with a final thought or impression. There are several components that should be included in a conclusion paragraph. The first is a restatement of a thesis statement. This should be this should not be a direct copy of the thesis statement from the introduction, but rather a rephrasing of it in light of the evidence and arguments presented in the body paragraphs of the essay. The second component of the conclusion paragraph is a summary of the main points of the essay. It should be a brief overview of the key points that were discussed in the body paragraph, and it should provide a sense of closure by bringing the essay full circle. The third component of a conclusion paragraph is a closing statement. This could be a final thought or reflection of the topic, or it could be a call to action for the reader. It should be something that leaves a lasting impression on the reader and encourages them to think more about the topic. Overall, the conclusion paragraph is an important part of the essay as it provides a sense of closure and summarizes the main points of an essay. It should include a restatement of the thesis statement, a summary of the main points, and a closing statement. So the writing process. This is just one of the ways that you can go about writing your essay if you're stuck or you just don't know how to start. So there are five steps in this process. We start with pre-writing, then drafting, revising, editing, and then publishing. So in our pre-writing, these are just some questions that you can think about. What do I want to say? How do I want to say it? Who will read my writing? What else do I need to know to begin? Who can I talk to about my ideas? You just think you brainstorm. It's just, just a scratch. And then drafting some questions that you can think about when drafting are, are my thoughts organized? Which ideas do I want to develop? In what order do I want to say them? Who can read this and offer suggestions? Revising is where we improve it. Some questions you can think about in this stage are, have I read it out loud? Are my de details clear or fuzzy? What do I want to add or remove? What words can I replace to make this better? And should I reorder my details or ideas? Editing is just making things correct. And some questions you can think about in this part is, are there incomplete sentences? Is there spelling and punctuation correct? Has someone checked my work? Is my final copy complete and neat? And then publishing is just the final step. And it, should I illustrate it? Should I bind it to a book? Should I act it out? Should I record a reading of it? That's just how you want to get your message out. So now let's just go more in depth on each step. So pre-writing is the first stage of the writing process. It involves brainstorming ideas, organizing thoughts, and developing a plan for the written work. Pre-writing is an important step because it helps writers clarify their thoughts and ideas and it helps them to focus on their main argument or point. There are several techniques that writers can use during a pre-writing stage. One technique is free writing, which involves writing down any and all ideas that come to mind without worrying about grammar, structure, or organization. This can be a useful way to generate ideas and get started on a writing project. Another technique is brainstorming, which involves coming up with many ideas as possible related to a specific topic. This can be done individually or in a group, and it's a good way to generate a lot of ideas quickly. Outlining is another technique that can be used during the pre-writing stage. This involves creating a structure or a plan for the written work. It can be helpful to create an outline before starting to write as it allows writers to organize their thoughts and to see overall structure in their work. 
Drafting is the second stage of the writing process. It involves turning the ideas and thoughts developed during the pre-writing stage into a rough draft of the written work. The goal of the drafting stage is to get a better stage of the ideas down on paper and to start shaping them into a cohesive whole. During the drafting stage, writers should focus on getting their ideas down on paper without worrying too much about grammar, structure, or organization. It is okay for a draft to be rough or incomplete at the stage, and is as it is met as a starting point for further revisions. As writers work on their drafts, they should aim to keep their main arguments or point in mind. They should also be sure to include supporting evidence and examples to help strengthen their, strengthen their argument. One technique that writers can use during the drafting stage is to start with the body of the essay or written work. This can be helpful as it allows writers to get their ideas on paper and to start organizing them before tackling the introduction or conclusion, which can be hard to start. So next is the revising stage, which is the third stage of the writing process. It involves reviewing and improving the content, organization, and style of the written work. The goal of the revising stage is to ensure that the written work is well written, clearly organized, and effectively communicates the main idea or point. During the revising stage, writers should focus on the overall structure and organization of the written work. They should make sure that the ideas are presented in a logical and coherent manner and that the transitions between the paragraphs are smooth and effective. Writers should also pay attention to the content of the written work. They should ensure that their main argument or point is clearly stated and that it is supported by strong evidence and examples. They should also check for any inconsistencies or errors in their work. In terms of styles, writers should just aim to be clear and concise. They should use language that is appropriate for their audience and avoid using unnecessary words or any extra fluff to make it longer. Just clean, cut, clear writing. One technique that writers can use during the revising stage is to read their work out loud. This can help them identify any un awkward or unclear sentences and make any necessary changes. This is something I use a lot. When I'm writing essays and I need to submit them, I always I like to read it out loud because when I read it, I can see any errors, I can spot anything that doesn't sound clear. Like when it's on paper or when you type it up, it's like hard to see. But when you say it out loud, you like you really feel does this make sense? Like does it make sense? When I really say this, you can identify a lot of errors, you can add more information. I think that's one of the best strategies to use, just reading your work out loud. Super simple, super easy, and it really does help. So the editing stage is the fourth stage of the writing process. It involves reviewing the written work for spelling, grammar, and punctuation errors. The goal for the editing stage is to provide a polished and error-free final draft of the written work. During the editing stage, writers should carefully review their work for any mistakes in spelling, grammar, and punctuation. They should also pay attention to the overall clarity and concision of their writing. One technique writers can use during the editing stage is to read their words backwards, read their work backwards, starting from the last sentence and work their way to the beginning. This can help them focus an individual in this can help them focus on individual words and sentences and catch any errors that they might have missed before. The reason this technique works really well is because when you're reading or you're working your work backwards, you're not really focused on your topic. You just you you're more focused on each individual sentence. So it's really effective to spot any errors that you may have in your work. And then another te technique during the editing stage it's just super simple super common a lot of us do this it's just having someone else review your work the thing is no matter how many times you go over your work you can never have it down like 
sometimes I've just gone over my work sometimes and I don't spot anything. But then I have a friend or a teacher read it and you can get so much more. Like just another perspective always helps. So I highly recommend this. Just having just even like a friend quickly read through it. Like sometimes there's stuff that you miss, like big errors you miss. It's always super helpful to just have another person review your work. And then finally, the fifth and final stage of the writing process is the publishing, publishing stage. It involves making the written work available to a wider audience, either through print or online distribution. The goal of the publishing, publishing stage is to share the written work with others and to make it accessible to a wider audience. There are several ways writers can publish their work. If the written work is intended to, for print publication, writers will need to submit their work to a publisher or to self-publisher. This may involve working with an editor or design team to produce a final print version of their work. If the written work is intended for online publication, writers have many options. They can publish the work on their own website or blog, or they can submit it to an online publication or platform. In either case, writers will can need to consider issues such as copyright, licensing, and distribution. So for this, guys, it's just really important not to plagiarize any work. Like, use your sources wisely. Take advantage of, like, Google, like, your books. But plagiarism is a big thing so i always like to run my work through a plagiarism checker before submitting it anywhere because like you might miss any details and plagiarism is a big thing especially when you get to college you can get in big trouble so just make sure you're not plagiarizing any work especially if you're going to submit it somewhere or if you want to publish it Now we're gonna be going over the types of essays. So there are four main types of essays. And they're narrative essays, descriptive essays, expository essays, and argumentative essays. So a narrative essay is a type of essay that tells a story. It is a written account of a personal experience or event and is typically told in first person the purpose of a narrative essay is to entertain the readers and to communicate a lesson or more. So this includes a set of characters, location and plot, and has details, a story from a particular point of view. It has fine details for the readers to feel emotion and the point of the essay early on first paragraph. And it's always based around a fact. So the next type of essay is a descriptive essay. A descriptive essay is a type of essay that is designed to describe a person, place, object, or event in detail. The purpose of a descriptive essay is to provide the readers with a rich and detailed understanding of the subject. So in this type of essay, we are describing something in great detail. It can be over any topic, but you just have to go really in depth keywords everything lots of details included it should be concise and easy to understand and use imagery in this because we want our readers to be able to understand what's happening right we need them to visualize understand so imagery words lots of imagery words to help paint a picture and then our next type of essay is an expository essay an expository essay is a type of essay that aims to explain or inform the reader about a particular topic. The purpose of an expository essay is to provide information about a topic in a clear and concise manner. So an expository essay is a way to look into a problem, compare and explore. It, it provides a variety of viewpoints on a subject it has a little bit of storytelling included, and then it also is usually used for more difficult subjects. And our final main type 
is an argumentative essay. Argumentative essay is a type of essay that pre presents an argument or claim and supports it with evidence. The purpose of an argumentative essay is to persuade the reader to accept the writer's point of view on a particular issue. So in this, you're attempting to convince the readers about your personal opinion, show the readers whether the topic is true or false, and provide your own opinion, use facts to back up the data and claims made. So a narrative essay, our first type. Um, narrative essays are written accounts of personal experiences or events that are usually told in first person. Their purpose is to entertain the reader and convey a lesson or moral. To properly format a narrative essay, it is essential to include an introduction that sets the stage of a story, a body that describes the events in detail, and includes sensory details and dialogue, and a conclusion that summarizes the main points of the story and provides closure. The body should be organized in a logical and chronological order, and the main characters and their actions should be included. The conclusion should also include any lesson or moral conveyed in the story. So this type of essay really just has your ability to be creative, get all personal. Um, it's it's more free flowing, just doesn't strictly divide into introduction, body, and conclusion. It's really unique. Your personal experience, imagine, use your creativity, and it's the way you tell this should be engaging and really well structured. And these are the same skills used for college applications. On your college application essays, you're usually going to be telling a narrative story, right? A personal experiences, personal experience. So colleges can really get to know who you are. So begin with setting up a narrative and finish by expressing the point of the story, what you learned from it and why you made an expression, right? Because each of these essays, our goal is just like you're going to try delivering a lesson learned or more. So descriptive essays are designed to provide a detailed and comprehensive description of a person, place, object, or event. They aim to give the reader a full and immersive understanding of a subject. To achieve this, descriptive essays should include vivid and sensory details that help the reader experience the subject as if they were present. The essay should also be well organized with a clear introduction, body, and conclusion. The introduction should include the subject and state the purpose of an essay. The body should provide a detailed description using sensory language, and the conclusion should summarize the main points and provide a sense of closure. Descriptive essays should be written in a clear and concise manner and should include vivid and sensory details to engage the reader. So the next type of essay we have is an expository essay. Expository essays are designed to provide information about a specific topic in a clear and concise manner. They aim to explain or inform the reader about a subject. To do this, expository essays follow a specific structure with an introduction that provides context and states the purpose of an essay, a body that presents the main points in a logical and coherent manner with providing evidence and examples and a conclusion that summarizes the main points and provides closure. These essays should be written in a formal tone, use clear and concise language, and be well organized to present the information in an easy to understand way. In summary, expository essays are meant to inform the reader about the topic in a clear and concise manner. So the final the final type of essay we are going to be going over are argumentative essays. Argumentative essays are written to present a specific argument or claim and support it with evidence. The goal is to persuade the reader to accept the writer's perspective on a particular issue. 
To achieve this argumentative essays have a specific structure and include an introduction that introduces the topic and prevents the main argument or claim, a body that presents the main points and supports them with evidence and examples, and a conclusion that summarizes the main points and recites the argument in a new way. These essays should be written in a formal tone, use clear and concise language, and be well organized to present the information in a logical and easy to understand manner. In summary, argumentative essays aim to persuade the reader and it, to accept the writer's point of view on a particular issue by presenting an argument and supporting it with evidence. So these are just some other essay types. We aren't going to be going over them in this workshop, but just some examples such as definition essays, simple essays, persuasive essays, analytical essays, compare and contrast essays, cause and effect essays, and some more. See, these are just some reference links for DUSC, how to be part of the team. And if you want to donate, you can use this Amazon Smile link. And thank you so much for joining our workshop today. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment them. 